Good morning, Beaver Nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Beaver Nation. My name's Mr. C. And my name is Aubrey. Today is Friday, February 5th. Happy Friday! Happy Friday! Made it through another one. Good job, Beaver Nation. On Wednesday's show, we talked about not knowing who to believe on Groundhog Day. Punxsutawney Phil said one thing and Sir Walter Wally said something different. Then, to add to the confusion, Mr. Hill reported that there is another Groundhog Charles E. Hogg, also known as Staten Island Chuck, who gets consulted each year. Apparently, Chuck agreed with Sir Walter Wally. It's all very confusing. Yes, it is. So we decided to consult a local expert. Thank you, Bailey. I hope that clears things up for everybody now. Yes. I guess we'll have to wait and find out, won't we? Mm-hmm. Also, we want to say thank you to all the third graders who sent us jokes this week. We had three students from Mrs. Torian's class and one from Mrs. Russett's class send us jokes. Joke time! Joke time! Here we go. Logan from Mrs. Russick's class. What did the balloon say to his dad? I don't know. What? Watch me, Pop. <laughs> Commas matter. This is Isley from Miss Torian's class. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dwayne. Dwayne who? Dwayne the bathtub. I'm drowning. <laughs> this is Maggie. Also from Miss Torian's class, yes. right? Yes. The next ones will all be from Miss Torian's okay. class. Okay. Okay. So Maggie from Miss Torian's class. What does the egg do for fun? I don't know. What? Karaoke. <laughs> the last one is from Amelie in Miss Torian's class. What animal hates to share his space? I don't know. What? Which one? A groundhog. Oh, yes. I, yeah, I believe that. I believe that. And they can't decide either. So yep. we needed that joke on Wednesday. Thank you, Amelie. Thank you to everybody who sent those in. We really do appreciate it. Here's Elizabeth with today's Spotlight On segment. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Thiele, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm going to be presenting this episode's Black History Month segment. Today, we're focusing on Michelle Obama. Before she became famous, Michelle was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, with her parents and her brother, Craig Robinson. They both happened to skip the second grade and attended Princeton University. Michelle graduated in 1985, where she majored in sociology and minored in African American studies. She then went on to further her education at Harvard Law School, where she got her Juris Doctor degree. She became a lawyer, where she met Barack Obama at the firm that she worked at. She then had many different jobs while she became interested in helping people in Chicago. Michelle Obama's family consists of Barack Obama, who she got married to in 1992 on October 3rd. She also has two daughters that are Malia, who is 22, and Sasha, who is 19. Michelle Obama had many programs that she was in charge of as First Lady. In 2010, she began her first program that was called Let's Move. This encouraged kids to get out there and exercise and have a healthier diet. She and Dr. Jill Biden, who was the current second lady at the time, started another program in 2011 that was called Joining Forces. This was calling the nation to serve veterans, people in the military, and their families. In 2014, she launched another one of her projects called Reach Higher that was urging and encouraging young people of America to value and continue their education. Her last program as First Lady that she launched 
was the Let Girls Learn program that she began in 2015 that was encouraging young girls to stay in school and empowered many young women. Thanks for watching this episode segment for Black History Month. Bye. Thank you, Elizabeth, and great job. Here's Mrs. Walton with our random knowledge. It's time for another edition of Random Knowledge with Mrs. Walton. Are you ready for some football? This Sunday is the Super Bowl. The first Super Bowl was held on January 15, 1967. The game on Sunday is Super Bowl 55. LV is 55 in Roman numerals. The game will be between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. It will be the first time in history that a team will play the Super Bowl in their home stadium, Tampa Bay. This is Sarah Thomas. She will be the first woman referee to officiate a Super Bowl game on Sunday. This is the Vince Lombardi Trophy. It's awarded to the winner of the Super Bowl. It is made by Tiffany and Company, and it's made of sterling silver. Many people watch the Super Bowl to see the commercials. It costs companies about $5.5 million for a 30-second commercial during the Super Bowl. Watch the game on Sunday to see who wins and to see the commercials. Back to you, Aubrey and Mr. C. Thank you, Mrs. Walton. $5.5 million for a 30-second commercial? That's a lot of dollars. Yes, it is. You ready to reveal your mystery location? Yes, I am. Did you guess where I was, Beaver Nation? That's right, Black Wall Street. Could you, congratulations to everyone who got it right. Thank you, Aubrey. You're welcome. Here's Isaiah with our wave makers for today. Good morning, Beaver Nation. My name is Isaiah from the Student Light House team, and today's wave maker is Layla Goodwin. She shared habit three, put first things first. Layla remained on task when presented with distractions. Good job, Layla. Thank you, Isaiah. And don't forget to send in your pictures if you're a wave maker. Yes, please don't forget. What's your history lesson, lesson about this week? Dolls. Dolls? Dolls. What's good, Beaver Nation? Yes, I said dolls. As in, Cabbage Patch Dolls. These were first introduced in 1976 as Little People. The name was changed in 1982 to Cabbage Patch Kids. People used to wait in line for hours to buy just one of these. Maybe some of your grandparents did. Actually, you didn't buy one, you adopted one, and each one came with its very own birth certificate. Each kid has a first and a last name. This is Jessica Bradley, with two E's, and you can see that today she's wearing her pinky Tuscadero outfit. This is Kelly Elizabeth with the red hair. And this is the baby of the bunch, Morgan Elizabeth with an S. Oh, sorry, Morgan Elizabeth. In 1983, the dolls went on record as the most successful new doll in the history of the toy industry. If all the Cabbage Patch kids that have been adopted were to form their own country, it would be the 10th most populous country in the world. That means there'd only be nine other countries with more people in them. And I think it's kind of funny to think about going to visit that country, see all those little Cabbage Patch kids running around. With more than 130 million kids born since the early 1980s, it averages one birth every 6.8 seconds. There you go, Beaver Nation. Hopefully you've learned a little bit more about the 80s. Thank you, Mr. C. You're have welcome. You, have, you adopt, have you ever adopted a Cabbage Patch Kid? No, I, I never adopted any of the Cabbage Patch Kids. I think I had like three. One with red hair, one that was bald, and one with blonde hair. Oh, okay. Well, they... They just weren't for me.
All right, Beaver Nation, uh, Free Food Friday is gonna look a little bit different this week. And there's a reason why. So starting this past Monday, uh, my, my favorite neighbor across the street and I, Miss Carmen, started a 10 day green smoothie cleanse, trying to get your body good and healthy. And there's like very few things, we, we gotta blend it all up and so there's very few, I can't, we, I can't eat anything good. So we're having to, to switch up Free Food Friday just a little bit, but it works out okay because I was such a picky eater growing up that what we have for Free Food Friday, I've never had before. And it's, it's still nasty. It, it, some of you might love it, but it is a hard boiled egg. So just a regular old egg, I already peeled it off. It, it smells nasty, doesn't it? I thought it was you at first, but it, I think it's the egg. Is it, you don't smell it? Never, in all my life, never had one. So what we're gonna do, they say that you're supposed to put some salt on it. Twist um, it. Uh, can I put the salt? Because Turn it over. Oh my gosh. Twist it, I think they gave me a, oh yeah, there it is. There it is. All right, we gotta salt it up. Oh my gosh. Mm, that salt is so good. All right, I'm gonna cut it in half. Oh, don't eat the salt. Why are you just eating this one? I mean, it's part of if you cut excited. it, isn't all the yolk gonna come out when I cut it? Though? Oh, yeah. All right, you ready? Uh, it's like... Okay. It doesn't smell any better on the inside, does it? <laughs> <coughs> all right, now this is one thing I can eat. Excuse me, excuse me. All right, you ready? Oh, you didn't even count down. Oh, shit. Ugh. Okay, here I go. Oh, I just... <coughs> it's stuck in the back of my throat. <laughs> I'm not... Now I know why Cars I'm over these. there telling me... Aubrey, you have to eat more. No, I'm not eating more. The bad it's thing gross. is, I gotta eat the whole thing. Uh, ah, ah. Uh. We don't have any water picks. Oh, we didn't make any water. Oh. I just like this song. Whew. All right, here we go. Aubrey's gonna take a bite. You ready? I'm scared. Don't smell it, just bite it. Ugh. How is it? She's not loving it. <laughs> it's nasty, isn't it? Because it's it's kind of like rubbery. Oh, piece fell off. It's like rubbery on the outside and you hit the inside. Oh, it's like chalky. Oh, oh. I'm going to keep eating it, though. Oh, I don't know why I keep buying it. That's it for today, Beef Nation. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Mm. With Boom. Oh. Sorry, excuse me. We love you. Me, we love you. We miss you, and we will see you soon. And like I said, with the mussels, uh, if you've never tried one of these, I'd prefer you not to try it. What? Like that fell out. Uh. But I don't. I don't understand how my grandpa likes these. Uh. Bye.